Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with a weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is my Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 bandolier in the monogram canvas. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. I do have Monsieur Edward here with me. I don't know if he'll come up to say hello. I hope he does. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of excited that he's hanging out with me. <laughs> All right, so starting with the first question from Ma Petite V, hopefully I said that correctly. What are your thoughts on Hedy Slimon taking over Celine and pretty much erasing all the current bags and the history of Phoebe Philo? Will you get another Celine bag before they're gone? Uh, this is an awesome question. And what are my thoughts on Hedy taking over Celine and pretty much erasing the current bags and the history of Phoebe Philo? Um, I'm not the craziest about it. I know that there's been a lot of talk uh, and there's a lot of different threads on the purse forum on this, uh, on this exact topic. And um, someone said it perfectly on last week's um, MMQA in the comment section. They said that that seems like such an ego thing, you know, to, to want to get rid of pretty much everything that the previous creative director ended up doing. And to me, Phoebe Philo made such a huge impact on the fashion house. And I personally feel that the luggage line, I know this is one that's on the chopping block, um, one uh, one of the designs that's not on the chopping block, I could be mistaken, is the box bag. But as far as this one, to me, it's an iconic bag. I know some people think it's done and over with, but it's been around for such a long time. They've made it in so many different um, colors. They made it in so many different types of leather that once you start to do that, to me personally, I feel that it is an iconic bag. It is classic to the fashion house. It's a staple, you know, in a sense. So to want to completely get rid of that and just start fresh, I think that's kind of ridiculous. Um, because even if it's not necessarily not necessarily for you if it's not necessarily the direction that you want to go for to me there's a part of being able to appreciate what the previous person did especially if they made such a big splash with the fashion house you know some people might see it that way some people might not but um, yeah I think that's incredibly um, I think that that's incredibly selfish for someone to want to completely get rid of um, everything else and just start fresh. Um, I will also say that I saw, I saw the bag that, um, that, he, uh, that he created, the one that Lady Gaga was recently carrying around. There's something about it that I really like. I do appreciate it. I like the simplicity that it has. It also reminds me of a few other fashion houses kind of into one, um, but to completely get rid of such iconic pieces to the to the brand I think would be a total mistake um, but again that's just my those are just my two cents um, and will I end up getting another Celine bag before they're gone I don't think so you know I'm I, I've had such a journey when it comes to the luggage totes you guys know I went from the Phantom to the Mini and now to the Nano and I'm crazy crazy happy with the Nano I was recently at um, Nordstrom and I saw the plum version of this one it is insanely gorgeous but I think at this point in time I have been looking at adding a completely different fashion house to my collection so while I do appreciate it I think it's great and I think maybe uh, in the future I'll definitely end up going the pre-love route if they end up getting rid of them but um, as of right now um, I'm kind of focused on a completely different fashion house one that I don't currently own but um, yeah, it's crazy. So I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Um, you know, the, the articles might be wrong. Maybe that's not the direction that it's going in. But if that is the case, that's a major, major bummer because I like it. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but if, whether you like it or not, you have to appreciate the fact that it's been around for a long, long time. And I personally see it as iconic. But uh, fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Sandra Capers. Have you ever heard of a white discoloration developing in the pockets of a wallet? I have a Sarah wallet that I bought at the flagship in Paris in 2016. I do not use this wallet on a regular basis. I store it in my closet in a basket with other small leather goods. I do not keep it in the box or dust bag. I noticed today in the pockets part of the leather and canvas covered in white. At first I thought it was a stain, but then I noticed it in the other pockets. Have you ever heard of this? I am nervous it could be some sort of mildew or mold. It is white and not raised or furry. Yuck. 
None of the other items it is stored with has this. Any thoughts? Um, all right, so I have heard of the white discoloration happening on uh, on items, whether it's handbags or small leather goods, especially the ones that have the leather lined pockets. You know, you'll see the you'll see that start to happen a little bit more often. Um, and unfortunately, I could be wrong, but unfortunately, it does sound like it could be mold. Um, and usually, you do hear about it more more than anything on vintage pieces because those vintage pieces over the years they haven't been cared for properly or sometimes you hear about it where uh, people live in very uh, humid climates where that moisture starts to affect how the leather ends up wearing over time uh, but the crazy thing is that this item is from 2016 so you said that you don't keep it in the box you don't put it in the dust bag it has proper ventilation so it leads me to believe that it could end up being a um, a faulty piece and I would definitely recommend going into the boutique and letting them know because um, it shouldn't end up having that discoloration this quickly especially if it's not something that you use too often um, so uh, you know in order to kind of like nip this in the bud I would definitely go to your nearest boutique as soon as possible you know even though you got it in Paris like I said they should stand behind their product because you haven't had it too long and the fact that you haven't worn it as often I feel that it really is a faulty piece of um, you know, a faulty piece of leather that could cause it to wear that quickly because sometimes the, the length of uh, the, the life age of a leather piece could vary. Um, but still, it shouldn't in two years time, it shouldn't end up it shouldn't end up happening that quickly. You know what I mean? So um, hopefully I'm not giving you guys false information, but from what I have seen and from what I have read, um, that white discoloration does end up being mold. But if you do have any information on this, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, and sometimes it'll start to develop a smell as well. Uh, so that's also something to look out for. But regardless, if you have any information on it, let us know in the comment section down below. So uh, good luck and hopefully uh, Louis Vuitton ends up uh, taking care of you and let us know what ends up happening. You know, I'm really curious to see what they end up saying, but uh, good luck and hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Teach, Pray, Shop. I've had two Neverfull MMs over the years. My first was a Damia Zor with Rose Ballerine inside. The second one, two years later, was a monogram with a beautiful red interior. Both, although pre-loved, were in like new condition. I ended up selling each one just a couple months after purchasing, but I cannot stop looking at the Neverfull MM. I am on the website every day and checking the pre-love market for a Neverfull MM. I recently met up with my cousin and she had a monogram Neverfull and I couldn't stop drooling. I don't know what to do. Should I just get over it and tell myself that it's just not for me or should I give it one more chance and purchase it new this time? All right, so usually, like I was talking about last week, usually when you end up sell, uh, selling a bag, you detach from it and you figure out why it didn't end up working out for you, right? So that's the first thing that I would do. I would ask myself, why exactly did I get rid of it? Is it because it was pre-loved, as you said? You know, even though they were in like new condition, is there part of you that wishes it would have been uh, brand new? Um, was it because both of them had the colored interior and maybe you prefer the classic beige interior? Um, another thing that you have to ask yourself is does the bag silhouette actually work for my lifestyle because if you found yourself gravitating towards other bags more so than that one or you found that you ended up leaving it on your shelf a lot more often then that's also something that you want to think about because it could be that you do appreciate it you know you do appreciate the the entire details that it has and just the silhouette that it has but you know in your heart of hearts it won't end up working out for you um, and you know it's kind of funny because two years later or even all this time that's passed by and you're still thinking about it it could be just because it hasn't been the exact combination that you're looking for so that's what I was saying about the beige interior maybe you do want the mon monogram with that beautiful beige it's classic and uh, that way you can use it a little bit more you don't have to worry that um, you know if you have lighter small leather goods you'll end up getting that color transfer or anything like that but more than anything I would just ask myself and be very honest as to why I ended up getting rid of them in the first place because there's been bags that um, you know I really like I end up selling them but I have to make sure 100% that I, that I am detached from them otherwise I do end up having that seller's remorse that I talked about last week so I don't know if that's helpful or not but um, if you do end up going for it, if you do go for the new one, congratulations on your soon to be new never full. Uh, but if you decide to pass on it, I'm sure there's another bag out there that's absolutely fabulous that ends up working out the best for your lifestyle. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Aliyah Ghanisan. Hopefully I said that correctly. 
I would really like to know how much a Pichette Matisse fits in comparison with the Chanel Jumbo. I know they are very different bags, but I have the Chanel Jumbo and I would like to add the Pichette Matisse, but I have no point of reference in my collection versus yours other than the Jumbo. Uh, all right, so we have a little bit of eye candy. Here is the Louis Vuitton Pichette Matisse in the monogram canvas. And here is the Chanel um, Jumbo Classic Flap in the Black Caviar with the gold hardware. Uh, all right, so when I first saw this question, I thought for sure I'd end up fitting more in the Jumbo just because of its size, right? It's a little bit bigger. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that you can end up fitting just around the same amount of items in both of them. That's crazy, right? Um, but what I noticed is that when it comes to the Pichette Matisse, I can really end up maximizing my space and carrying a little bit more uh, small leather goods if I end up putting them on their sides. By doing that, um, not only am I able to see everything at a glance, but it also doesn't make it as bulky. Because if you were to put the items in here as you would in the Jumbo, it would make it, it would have way too many lumps and bumps. It would end up just kind of sticking out. It would end up uh, protruding off of your body. If you were to close it, it would be a little bit harder to close it, to be honest. Um, but by putting them on their sides, I feel that you can really end up maximizing your space with this one. Um, and when it came to the jumbo, I mean, with this one, you only have so much space, right, on the bottom. And it doesn't have as many compartments as the Pichette Matisse does, but it is also a little bit taller. So with this one, I noticed that I can end up putting the items um, right side up. I didn't necessarily have to put them on their side. You can, but if you end up putting them uh, right side up, you have to put them on top of each other in order to carry the same amount of items that you do in the Pichette Matisse. At least this was my experience. And to me, sometimes I find that to be a little bit fussy because if you do have to get to this small of a good down here, you have to take everything out on top of it in order to, to retrieve that item. So um, I'm not the biggest fan of doing that. So you can end up putting them on their side, but if you wanted to carry the same amount of items that you would inside of your Pichette Matisse, I feel that you'd have to uh, put the small leather goods on top of each other. Um, like I said, some people uh, might end up packing this differently, but um, I tried it all sorts of ways. And any way that I did, I found, I found that by doing, uh, by putting them right side up and putting them on top of each other, that's the only way I was able to really carry as much as the Pichette Matisse uh, ended up having. Another thing that I wanted to throw out there, if you do end up going for this bag, you will notice um, how lightweight it is in comparison to this guy fully loaded. Because of the canvas, it's just that much more comfortable to be able to use. But this is an awesome handbag. I know it's not for everybody, but um, I know some people might think that you can only carry so much in here, but because of all the little compartments that it has, and as long as your small leather goods aren't too, too bulky, if they aren't too big, you can really get away with carrying a lot more in here. But um, like I said, you can, um, it's crazy that they fit just around the same amount of items. <laughs> so hopefully that was helpful. And if you do end up going for the Pichette Matisse, congratulations on your soon to be bag. But fantastic question. Next question from Anne Gremza. Have you started thinking about a Black Friday shopping list yet? Uh, no, I have not. It's crazy that it's right around the corner, right? Uh, but it could be because my birthday is before Black Friday. But to be completely honest with you, I haven't had the best success when it comes to Black Friday deals. I think that once upon a time, way back when, you used to have a lot better pricing, a lot better deals, I mean, substantial savings than you do now. Yeah, you still save 10, 15, 20% off on certain items. And uh, I mean, if you can save any money at any point in time, I think that's awesome. But it's not, like I said, it wasn't, it's not like it used to be. Um, you know, I mostly see the best savings like on electronics or on TVs, you know, and it's like, do I want to buy it? TV every single year? No. Uh, but even when it comes to clothing or anything like that, I have the worst, the worst luck, you know? So um, back in the day, we used to go to Mervyn's. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mervyn's or not, but we were all about Mervyn's and we used to get up at the crack of dawn to go to go stand in line and it was fun, but at the same time, it's like, I don't miss those days. <laughs> I don't miss those days at all. So the fact that you can shop from the comfort of your own home, I think it's awesome, but um, I, don't see, I don't see the same amount of savings that I used to way back in the day. I think that, um, I, I think I see better deals like on after Christmas sales than I do on Black Friday deals. It could just be me, I don't know. But I would love to know, have you started your list for Black Friday? If you have, or if you haven't, let us know in the comments section down below. But fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. 
Next question from Lux Lab Life. I know you and I shared the same dream of owning a classic Louis Vuitton piece from our birth years. I recently found a vintage Petit Noé from my birth year with excellent canvas. Although the canvas is wonderful, the leather and the hardware needed some TLC. Since it was my first monogram piece and being so special to me, I splurged and had all the leather and hardware replaced. She's a beauty. Have you been actively searching for a bag from your birth year? When you find one, because I know you will, will you get the Vaquetta replaced or keep it in the condition you purchase it in? Well, first and foremost, major congratulations on your vintage Petite Away from your birth year. I think that's awesome. Um, and have I been actively have I been actively searching for a bag for my birth year? Absolutely, I have. There are days, I hate to admit it, but there are days when I will be in front of the computer or on my phone for hours for hours trying to find one. I find plenty from the early 90s, but it's getting harder and harder to find the ones from the 80s, especially ones that aren't so beat up, you know, when it comes to the canvas um, or anything like that. So it's getting harder and harder to find as more time passes. And as far as replacing the Vaquetta or keeping it the way that it is, I don't know. I'm kind of like 50-50. Part of me loves the fact that it has so much history, it has so much character to it, and I also don't have to be careful because it already has um, that oxidized uh, leather, it has that beautiful patina, so it makes it a little, a little bit more carefree. And then the other part of me thinks, okay, well, if I end up replacing all of the Vaquetta, it's just adding that much more life to the handbag. I can carry it for another 20, 30 years if I want to. And um, it's just giving it a whole new chapter, you know? So I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of in between both. I don't know which way to go. I think the first thing would be, uh, the first thing to tackle would be to find the bag. And the one that I'm looking for more than anything, more than any other silhouette, is a classic, uh, classic Speedy 25. That's the one that I wanna get in my birth year. Uh, but I think once I find it, I'll know exactly what to do, you know? I think I'll be like, oh, this is it, this is perfect, I'm gonna keep it the way that it is, or I'm gonna say, you know what, let's give it a little bit more life, let's give it another chapter. I have no idea, <laughs> I'm so indecisive. Uh, so uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, I can find one, but it's getting so much harder to find them um, nowadays. Next question from Melly Pink. I wanted to ask if you've ever given a gift to a sales associate at Louis Vuitton and Chanel. I've heard contrasting opinions. Some say the sales associates are not allowed to accept gifts. I was thinking of some chocolates for the holidays and a thank you note, but wonder if it is okay or not. Um, all right, so have I ever given a gift to a sales associate at Louis Vuitton and Chanel? Absolutely, I have. Uh, it's just my way of, uh, of saying thank you, you know, for everything that they've done for me. I've been very, very fortunate to have some amazing connections and to have some awesome experiences with uh, sales associates over the years. And if I can uh, give them something again, just by saying thank you, I'm all about that. Um, there's also some sales associates that I've gotten to know on a very, very personal level to the point where I don't even talk to them about handbags. It's more so about, you know, how's your hubby? How's Edward? And um, those uh, those relationships I hold very near and dear to my heart. Uh, so I've given them uh, flowers, bottles of champagne, chocolates, gift cards, thank you notes, just any little thing just so I can say uh, once again, thank you for everything that you've done for me. I haven't heard of them not being able to accept gifts. Um, sometimes when I'll show up, um, I'll have like an, like an obnoxious bouquet or balloons or whatever, and they get so embarrassed. So I try not to embarrass them either. Uh, but um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really heard of them not being able to just because I, I feel that they're providing a service. Yes, they do get paid from the company, but at the same time, if they're going above and beyond for you, if they're doing, um, if they're, if they're, if you're, if they're giving you that service, as I said before, um, and you really appreciate it, then um, I think, I think it's wonderful wonderful to be able to uh, to give them something just to say uh, thank you. So I think it's okay. I'm all about it. Um, but I haven't heard of them having any um, any restrictions or any uh, rules where they can't accept this. So I don't know. It could be um, a, a store by store scenario. I have no idea, but I haven't heard of that. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Claire Breton. Hopefully I said that correctly. I've needed a change of hair color and I love yours. What exactly did you have done to it? Uh, thank you so much. I actually ended up getting it lightened closer to my natural hair color. That way it makes it a whole lot easier when it starts to grow out. And I also ended up getting highlights, face framing highlights, purely 
for vanity purposes because let me tell you, these gray hairs are coming in hot and <laughs> up against my dark brown hair, you can see them a mile away. And I felt like if I dyed my hair on Monday, by Wednesday, you'd start to see it. I have my gray hairs like most people do on the crown of their head. It's like, why can't it show up back here? Why can't I have my gray hairs back here? I don't care what happens back here. But up here, really, <laughs> it's like I'm at the point of no return. So it makes it a whole lot easier. I will still end up going a little bit lighter just because um, my hair was so dark before, so it's still a process. I do like the caramel, but um, just if I go a little bit lighter, I think it'll make it that much uh, that much easier when they start to come out, you know, because um, I was dyeing my hair. It really felt like every single solitary week, and it was getting to be such a hassle. So if I can buy some time by lightening my entire hair color, um, I, think, <laughs> I think that's the way to go. But um, I'm definitely, definitely at the point of no return when it comes to dyeing my hair because of these awesome gray hair. Some people can pull it off. I mean, I, I think it's amazing when I see someone that has their natural hair color and their, their gray hairs are coming out and it just looks so beautiful. Um, but with mine, I think because I've been dyeing it for so long, it looks like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what I ended up doing it. I ended up lightening it and it's still a process. <laughs> so fantastic question. Hopefully that was able to help. And the last question from Charmex Pixies. I feel like the YouTube luxury community makes it so that there are some bags I want to buy, but I'm afraid to. To be more precise, I am currently saving money for my next luxury bag purchase and I really want to buy a Saint Laurent Sunset bag in black croc embossed leather. However, I feel like I should save more and put my money towards a Chanel bag just because it's what people here on YouTube seem to recommend. P.S. I know there's a huge price difference. My question here is, do you ever not buy a certain bag or brand of bags because you feel it's not recommended enough on social media? This is an awesome question. Um, I absolutely love it. So with social media, I do appreciate uh, so many aspects of it because you can get firsthand um, recommendations, you can get firsthand experiences of people that have certain handbags, you know, so if you don't have the, the possibility to go into the boutique and try it out yourself, or, um, you know, if there's, if you're curious as to how it wears or how much it weighs and things like that, I think that social media is able to bring that information to people's fingertips a lot easier than ever before, you know, so whether you're on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the internet, or whatever the case may be, I do appreciate that aspect of it. Another part of me says that, you know, um, when it comes to getting a certain bag just because that's what most people end up recommending, I certainly don't recommend that. And the reason I don't recommend that is because it's all a matter of personal preference. If you are looking at a handbag and if you are very interested in the resale value by going for this brand over a different brand, it might end up working out better for you in the long run, but at the same time, it's all a matter of what you really want to add to your collection and what really ends up working out for your lifestyle. Case in point, someone that is talking about a crossbody bag, if they love crossbody bags, they're going to be very excited about it or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. And someone that's watching that appreciates top handle bags more than the crossbody bags will look at it differently and say, well, you know, I don't really agree with it. It's not really for me. It's not really, really for me. Even if that's the popular handbag to go for. I definitely wouldn't go for it just because that's what everyone is doing. That's kind of like what I talked about last week with the Pouchette Matisse, you know? I will take a functional handbag, one that really works out for my lifestyle over a pretty popular bag any day of the week. Um, so that's just something to kind of take into consideration. And uh, if you love the Saint Laurent Sunset bag and after you've read, you know, how it ends up wearing or, you know, how it ages or this, that or the other. And if you're still intrigued by it, if you're still wanting to add that back to your collection, then that's the one to go for, not for the Chanel handbag. You know, so if that's, if the Saint Laurent, if you see yourself using it, if you know it'll end up working out for your lifestyle, absolutely that's the one that I would go for. It is a beautiful bag, you know? So for me, you know, when you're asking the question, if, um, if, I, if I would never buy a certain bag or brand of bags because I don't feel it's recommended enough on social media, I definitely don't see it that way. 
um, because there's a lot of fantastic, a lot of amazing brands out there that don't get the attention that they deserve on social media. Sometimes you will find um, brands that have just incredible, incredible leather, incredible details that sometimes are better than the big dogs have. You know what I mean? The quality is the craftsmanship is a lot better than some of the other, you know, better known brands. So if you ever do find a bag that you really like, regardless if it's popular or not, that's the one that you should go for. Um, but yeah, I appreciate certain aspects of uh, social media, but it's all a matter of personal preference and what ends up working out for me. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Um, all right, so now for the time of the handbag of the week. This week, I wanted to talk about the Christian Dior book tote bag. All right, so what do you guys think about this bag? I know it's been crazy popular in spring and summer and uh, it's available in so many different colors. I know that my very good friend Monique, she just got one personalized in green. It is absolutely gorgeous. I know Jen has one as well. Every time I see them, I think that they're so beautiful. I'm a sucker for monogram. Uh, and I also love the fact that it's a tote. It doesn't have you know, an extra cross body strap or anything like that. So the fact that it's a tote, the fact that it is a top handle bag, I absolutely love. You know, and Another part of me wonders how heavy it is or um, if it's just going to be an it bag for the moment or if it'll end up standing the test of time. So I am curious to hear your thoughts on these bags. I know they're not for everybody. There's certain aspects about it that I really appreciate about it and there's other aspects that I uh, end up questioning, you know, especially for my own personal taste, just because I really don't think I can end up pulling it off. Um, but uh, I think that they're so incredibly gorgeous, but I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts on this bag. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some amazing questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, I'm not sure what videos are going to be, but regardless, you will see me two more times. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.